You are live. Hi, Mark. Hi. Hi, Andrew. Hello, everybody. Hello, folks. Who's out there? We're actually uh, live in real, in the flesh, in the electronic <laughs> flesh today. <laughs> Hope you're all well. So we're doing it in English today, and we're going to talk about, um, what were the questions again? I've forgotten that. Uh, influences, um, musical influences, who's influenced you? And uh, one of the questions would, was, uh, which songs do you wish you'd written? <laughs> that was it, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mark, you, you start. Name, name a song you wish you'd written. Uh, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of musicals. I like musicals and that, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic song. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you find them in the most unusual places. Um, there's loads, isn't there? You know, and it's not not just for the money, but uh, for the <laughs> for the for the song Bohemian Rhapsody. I just think, oh, just excellent, a, an yeah. incredible, incredible piece of work, and such brave, so really brave. So I've, you know, against all the odds as well. And uh, yeah, I went to one opera in my life and thought that was amazing. So you're not just talking about a song, but an entire opera. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to write. I opera, wish I'd yeah. written that. <laughs> the yeah. Ring Cycle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what about yourself? Which um, songs come... have you written? The Empire Windrush. <laughs> <laughs> Wine from a no. mug. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, come on, Barbie, let's go party. Was uh, yeah. it's just so bad that. I just think it's so brazen to write something that bad and then publish it. I sort of respect that. Come on, Bobby, let's go party. Ah. So, um, serious, seriously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, that wasn't serious? Like? Uh, it kind of semi serious, yeah. Yeah, semi serious. Because, you, you know, it takes guts to, to publish something that bad. But um, uh, I, I do. I mean, I, I suppose I like, um, if I really like a song, I'm just really pleased with the person who wrote it, and I don't think I wish I'd written it. I don't want to take it away from them, but I do uh, really admire a lot of stuff that Bob Dylan and um, uh, Leonard Cohen wrote. And here's a really obvious song, um, a really obvious song that everyone knows, and that's Leonard Cohen's um, Hallelujah. And there's a particular line in that song, uh, in the last verse, I think, that I just think is amazing. I, I don't even really know what it means. And it, that's what both of those people do. They they say something and you think, what does that mean? It sounds really important, but I don't know what it means. And it just captivates you. And we went to see Leonard Cohen a few years back. And he put, before he sang every song, he pulled out a line that was obviously his famous line and just, favorite line and just said it. And he pulled out the line that I love. Um, and before it all went wrong, I stand here before the Lord of Song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. That's a that's a beautiful bit of poetry. And I'm just going to sing that verse and ruin it. just Because <laughs> everybody else does, so I might as well. <laughs> I just love it. It's just so beautiful. I gave my best, it wasn't much. I tried to feel and I tried to touch I Told the truth and I didn't come here to fool you And even though it all went wrong And I stand here for the Lord of Song With nothing on my toe but hallelujah Hallelujah all together, come on, join in, Mark. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, so I, I do actually wish I'd written that. Well, I wish I'd written that for the royalties alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly, Leonard Cohen was still performing like uh, into his eighties because he needed the money. So, so um, whoever whoever he signed the rights over to um, doesn't bother wishing they'd written it because they got the money anyway. <laughs> 
I'm I'm going to refrain from playing today because you can't see it from there. But I'm I'm kind of like uh, sitting very precariously with my foot, my broken foot, ah, <laughs> <laughs> up on the desk, and I'm in a bit of pain today. I've got to have my stitches out on the uh, on the ankle today, so I'm going to Ooh. refrain refrain yeah. from playing. Yeah, can you not just play the piano with your toes? Uh, You're right behind me. Not learned how to do that yet. <laughs> oh, we're getting a bit of grief that. here because we're because we're actually live. We can see the comments. Um, I've got a big capital letters. Andrew, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I've done. Um, Is that me? <laughs> from Our Barbie girl has been disrespected on a different level today. <laughs> so, sorry for dis disrespecting that song. Yeah. Did kind of say I, I admired it. <laughs> um, yeah, another another song that you wish you'd written any more? Um, or examples so, of um, words? Yeah, or just uh, yeah, just I suppose inf influences. Now we were going to talk about uh, influences and particularly musicians, and uh, and uh, three came to mind. Uh, we sp I spoke about, and I did a song from the Grateful Dead. And uh, Jerry Garcia, I absolutely is mm. one, one of the one of the musicians I admire the most because he. Uh, I don't know if anybody's uh, seen the documentary, the Amazon documentary, uh, Long Strange Trip. It's definitely worth a watch, you know. But it's just, I think it's fantastic the way uh, the the whole band, but particularly Jerry Garcia, uh, did absolutely everything in his power to sabotage. Uh, their careers as, as as becoming part of kind of the popular music machinery. There's some great interviews with the uh, with the record company exec uh, who was just pulling his hair out at the time because they just refused to play ball, you know, and and, and lived on a kind of a um, you know a financial breadline kind of you know for years and years, and they only really made any money sort of in the mid '80s and the late '80s, you know, so. I admire him. Uh, I, I admire him for for having the guts, and I suppose that shows as well that if you you know if you just stick at what you believe in, then uh, it will pay off to, to the tune of twenty eight million dollars <laughs> <laughs> at some point. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. And what about you, Andrew? Who's who's influenced you? Yeah, um, well, all kinds of things. I mean, someone I really admire and have done for the last few years is Stevie Wonder. Just um, something about his energy over decades as well from, from being, he, he became a, a star as a, a small child, little Stevie Wonder, and just had this sort of amazing energy, love. Uh, he, he's fought for, um, you know, despite being a, an, an A-list celebrity pop star has kept his political um, um, civil rights campaigning going and just uh, so doesn't forget to support campaigns that are going on is always aware of what's going on and uh, I went to see him live a few years ago and there were songs I didn't even know were his the concert went on for ages it was hours long and uh, I know a lot of his songs but there was stuff where I thought he did that as well. Unbelievable. Every every single one of them was just a, a hit song and, and great in its own way. So he's he's definitely one. And the fact he's still doing it and still has that energy at his age is just incredible. Really inspiring. Would, would you say that's one of your favorite concerts? Like what would you or what would you say what one of your favorite concerts you've ever been to? What's one of the the standout? Like, uh, I think at the time I said that's probably the best concert I've ever seen. Mm um for for that reason i mean the band was just phenomenal as well of course he doesn't he doesn't uh let just anyone join his band and and that that much is uh very clear <laughs> it's sort of amazing did, musician did you try yeah i mean he just said no straight away i didn't even get to ask i was just about to ask and he said no no so uh so that was that and um also i suppose much earlier the levelers i suppose that was the first kind of band in a large venue that i ever saw and i've seen the levelers a few times and that's the same thing as well just energy and dedication to a cause just always found that very inspiring and the fact that you can just jump around like a lunatic um <laughs> for the whole time mm. which appeals to me mm. what was the first kind of um gig that you went to that really struck you 
Um, there's two because like, but both my parents were music fans, and I was very lucky to you know rather than like or or they couldn't afford a babysitter so they just used to drag <laughs> us along <laughs> uh and one of the standout ones for me which was one of the reasons that was like a eureka moment for me where i said oh, that's what i want to do for a living was u uh, u2 and it was at milton Keynes bowl i think in i think it was about 1983 or something like that i don't i think i was about 12 or 13 at the time and it was hammering down of rain, and it was an all-day festival. So I got to see Billy Bragg. Um, you know, obviously I didn't get it. You know, at that at that particular, you know, <laughs> a bit too young for that. <laughs> the the Ramones played. Wow, live. I saw the Ramones, yeah. which is like is amazing. Again, I was too young to appreciate it, and I just thought, wow, this is mental. And uh, REM supported, but yeah, that was uh, that was um, that was an incredible experience. Just that kind of electricity, and uh, I think probably forty, fifty thousand 50,000 people, the event, and yeah, you you two just had a um, an incredible uh, talent of connecting with everybody in the audience, and I guess that's a real real challenge at those those big massive yeah. stadiums. Yeah. But, <laughs> but they. Uh, seem to seem to be able to do it yeah and then the next one yeah sounds really dangerous um lots of electricity forty thousand people <laughs> rain and connecting to everybody so it's the good old, like a deadly mixture it's the good old days when there weren't you know weren't, weren't any health and safety regulations you know you, <laughs> you could take your own cider and stuff like that you know they, they didn't they didn't take your drinks off you and then charge you a hundred quid for the for a a pint of beer, you know, you hadn't worked yeah. that out yet. Yeah, yeah. I bet. But you, you say you saw Billy Bragg and you, you didn't get it at that age. I think when you see stuff at that age, you don't get it at the time. But but I bet that left its mark and you kind Absolutely. of Absolutely, yeah. It. I remember it. I've still got the vision in my head because uh, everybody just pelted him with bottles, <laughs> plastic <laughs> bottles. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because everyone was bored and it was raining. Like, yeah, but no. <laughs> Uh, I remember, and he he was great, and just to, particularly because it was such a large audience, and he was there on his own, just him and a guitar, you know, and no loop station or anything, just him and a guitar. And uh, he, yeah, I remember, I, I remember it well. He he did a yeah. great job again of connecting with people and their bottles connecting with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, another, I'll do another song since. Uh, you know, since we like to put a bit of music in and your uh, foot's hurting, I'll, I'll um, one person I wanted to mention, because um, we've mentioned a lot of sort of rock and pop artists, but there's a there's a folk singer songwriter who I've always admired and I kind of wish I'd written most of his songs as well. <laughs> and that's Jez Lowe. And there's one song just popped into my head when I was thinking about this today. And it's a, a song called The Small Cold Song. So um, and it's. Small calls is when the um, the miners when the mine starts running out of coal, and it's the uh, the sign of the end of maybe your employment if you're a miner when the small call comes, mm -hmm. and it's Jez singing about an old school friend who went to work down the mines like almost all of his school friends did, while he was going off on his first tour as a musician, and it's just the um, the feeling okay here I am singing about miners. Uh, all my friends are miners, and my miners are going. You've you've got quite a nice life, haven't you? <laughs> not not having to do this really hard work, but you get to sing about it. So um, yeah, there's there's always that thing with singing songs about things. You've got to sing about something, but uh, you can't possibly have done all of the things that you sing about. So there's always that thing there, and I just think he he gets it beautifully in this song, the small call song. You sing your song. But what do you know? I heard me old friend say Your backs are straight as props and sleepers Your skin's as smooth as stem and clay But the small cool will be death of me I hear you in your barroom 
chorus I can't tell thinking of the day When I handed me me workloads You were off and on your way And them small cool will be The death of me There's more to it, but that's the, the gist. Lovely. So, all right, yeah, we've been... <laughs> Uh, we have actually had a request, which we probably can't do, but here it is from Cyprian, who put on our, our YouTube channel before we did this. Challenge for next week. Mark, sing Grace like Rod Stewart. Andrew, sing White Rabbit like Grace Slick. What do you say to that, Mark? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll take that challenge. We'll take that challenge. We'll take Speak that for yourself. Challenge. <laughs> I'll take that challenge just to hear you sing White Rabbits <laughs> I'm going to have to go and look it up first <laughs> yeah but you could you could maybe sing a I mean the Rod Stewart thing I remember just before a gig walking down the main street in Borkham and walking past a postcard shop and we had a gig in uh, no it wasn't it was in Dortmund and we had a, big, a gig in, in Dortmund that night and then I saw a picture of Mark on one of the postcards in the, in the shop, and I just thought, <laughs> what? Well, wow, they really switched on to gigs, you know, small folk gigs that are on in, in Dortmund tonight. And then I had a look at it, and it was Rod Stewart. But you, you had you had the hairstyle at the time. I had the know. hairstyle at the time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was quite, I was quite shocked. Yeah. I so remember. Maybe, maybe you should. <laughs> How are we doing for time? Oh, we've we've gone over time. So um, as usual, next, next week we're in German. We are in in Deutsch next to Woche. Um, I don't think we know what we're talking about yet, but uh, and in two weeks' time, back again in English. So good luck getting your stitches out, Mark. I hope it doesn't hurt too much, and hope oh, it... it really does. <laughs> yeah, I I've know. Had I've, had I've had it before. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, well, don't think about it too much, and uh, we'll chat again, same time, same place next week, or maybe we'll move the time. Okay, people, is this a good time? Obviously, it is for you because you're here. So people watching this at a better time, when should we do this? We, we should uh, get people's opinion. Um, let us know when when a good time for this would be, and maybe yeah. we'll move it. Not for each and every single one of you, like because we won't be able to do one per person. So we'll need Could to get, get a general. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, take care of yourselves. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye bye. Stay safe. <laughs>